Good afternoon. My name is Charles I. Halt. I retired from the U.S. Air Force in 1991 as a colonel. During my military career, I was base commander of two large installations, and at the time of my retirement, I was in the Department of Defense Inspector General's Office with total inspection oversight of all services and all service agencies. In 1980, I was reassigned from the Pentagon to RAF Bentwaters as a deputy base commander. At that time, Bentwaters was one of the largest tactical fighter wings in the world. We had the two base complex, Woodbridge and Bentwaters in England, and four FOLs in Germany, and two additional standby bases. In December 1980, early in the morning, several of our security policemen discovered strange lights in the forest in East Anglia, just outside the back gate of RAF Woodbridge. Three patrolmen, Sergeant Penniston, Airman Burroughs, and Airman Cabanasack, actually were dispatched into the forest and approached the craft. They reported it being triangular, approximately three meters on a side, dark metallic in appearance with strange markings. They observed it for a period of time and it very quickly and silently vanished at high speed. Initially, I was not aware of all the details. I was only told of strange lights, and I was sure there was a logical explanation. Two nights later at the family Christmas party, we were interrupted. The on-duty flight commander for the security police squadron, Lieutenant Bruce England, came and approached the base commander and I. He was white as a sheet. He said, it's back. He said, what's back? He said, the UFO. Well, we still were, I should say, non-believers at that point. Since my boss had to do the presentations, I was tasked, unfortunately, to investigate. So I went home and changed clothes, and I really expected to find a logical explanation. I took several security policemen with me, a disaster preparedness NCO who took an APN-27, a Geiger counter, and a camera. I also had my small cassette recorder I carried everywhere when I was on duty. Uh, I was taken to the supposed site. We find indentations approximately an inch and a half deep, approximately six to eight feet on a side, and radiation of eight to nine times normal background radiation. Not enough to be dangerous to somebody, but significant. We also find broken branches on the trees. While we were milling around trying to make sense of the whole thing, one of the individuals with me suddenly spotted something. Off through the forest was a bright, glowing object. The best way I can describe it, it looked like an eye. It was bright red with a dark center. It appeared to be winking. It would sort of wink. It was shedding something like molten metal. It was dripping off it. It silently moved through the trees, avoiding any contact. It bobbed up and down. And at one point, it actually approached us. We tried to get closer. It receded out into the field, beyond the forest, and silently exploded into five white objects. Gone. So we went out into the field looking for any evidence, because something had apparently been falling off it, and we'd, we found nothing. But while we were searching around in the field, one of the people with me noticed some objects in the sky to the north. There were three or four objects in the north, brightly colored, changing from elliptical to round, and moving at very high speed and sharp angular movements as though they were doing a grid search. While we were watching them, somebody else noticed to the south there were two objects just sort of hovering in the sky. One object approached us at very high speed, best guess is three to 5,000 feet, somewhere in that neighborhood, stopped directly overhead and sent down a concentrated beam at our feet. It was about one foot in diameter. The best way I can equate it is sort of a laser beam. We stood there in awe. Was this a warning? Was this an attempt to communicate? Was this a weapon or just a probe? Just as suddenly as it appeared, click, it disappeared. We stood there, ah, oh, really concerned. About that time, we noticed the other object to the south was sending down beams, about a mile, mile and a half away over Woodbridge Base. Uh, we had three different radios with us, the police radio, the security police radio, and I had to command that. All three radios were functional and we were talking to control centers. They were constantly breaking up and we had great difficulties communicating, but we were able to discern that the, on the police and security net that some of those beams were either falling into or near the weapons storage area and there's a great deal of concern. Uh, it really bothered me at the time. I, every time something of significance happened that night, I kind of clicked on my little tape recorder and recorded it so I'd have a record of it for the next day. 
Unbeknownst to me, a copy of that was released by one of my co-workers several years later, and hence it was a lot of publicity. My superiors at the time were informed what happened. I briefed my boss. I played the tape for him. He listened intently. Uh, he was aware of the incident because he was monitoring the night before on the radio. He and several others were. He took the tape to the 3rd Air Force staff meeting the following Wednesday. 3rd Air Force was the Air Force headquarters at that time in England. Played it for General Baisley, the commander and staff. They all sat silently. Uh, the decision was, uh, it happened off the base, so it's a British affair. In other words, they were loath to get involved. So my boss came back and threw me the tape recorder, and I said, well, what do we do, boss? He said, uh, get with Squadron Leader Moreland, who was the British liaison officer, and do a report. It's uh, their problem, not ours. Gosh, <laughs> here I am kind of caught in the middle, and I'm the junior guy here. Whoa, why did I ever get involved? Well, Squadron Leader Moreland was on vacation in Wales at the time. He came back, and he was quite upset that he was in the middle of the thing, too. So he said, well, write a memo. So I wrote a, I shall call it, cleaned up memo, just kind of unexplained lights, just to kind of tickle their, get them to come out and investigate and look into the thing. Well, I gave it to Moreland, and unbeknownst to me, Moreland sent a copy to his superior, 3rd Air Force. I didn't know that at the time. The copy to MOD was apparently buried in the files. Days turned into weeks, and weeks turned into months, and I almost forgot about the incident, to be honest with you. Gave up. Uh, several years later, one of my co-workers was playing a copy of my tape at cocktail parties and caught somebody's ear. Somebody started asking questions, and he said, oh, Halt wrote a memo. The next thing we know, there was a Freedom of Information request came in to, uh, to Bentwaters. Of course, there was no official copy. We didn't have word processors in those days. We used typing manifolds in the old typewriters. We were just transitioning. And the only copy was an onion skin that I had in my desk. So my boss went back and said, there's no official record of it. Well, somebody else found out the 3rd Air Force had a copy. Well, Pete Bent, a good personal friend of mine, was the acting 3rd Air Force commander, called me and he said, hey, Chuck, I've got a copy of this memo. We're going to have to release it. I said, please, burn it. Your life and mine will never be the same. You and I don't need this. Well, need I say more? The tape came out, unbeknownst to me. The memo came out, and a lot of publicity. But the events certainly happened. Now, some things have happened since then. I was very innocent at the time and believed what I was told. I asked the OSI if they had an interest, and I was told, oh, no, not at all. Wrong. Uh, I found out later that the airmen were, how should I say, pretty harshly interrogated that were involved. I have never been debriefed. I also found out later that the tower operator, at, uh, both the tower operators at Bentwaters saw an object and picked it up on their Bright 2 radar and watched it. I found out that the tower operator in a weapon storage area actually saw something, and did a comm man who was working there and saw it go down into the forest near us and also several other people around the base saw it. Uh, it's kind of interesting. What did we see? I have no idea what we saw that night. I do know it was under intelligent control, and in my personal opinion, it was either from another dimension or extraterrestrial. I think it's something other than the ground. I think it's something that's 
Yeah. 